Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here, the Raptors Digest, reacting to the Toronto Raptors made another free agent signing. We broke down DeAndre Bembry in our last video, but another sort of under the radar signing for the Toronto Raptors, Alex Len is now a Toronto Raptor, obviously was one of the top picks in the 2013 NBA draft, never really panned out to that sort of potential. I remember he was, the big thing surrounding Alex Len is that he was once a number one pick candidate in that old draft, but He's a guy, he's a big, you know, we we were worried we weren't going to have any center striker, but now it looks like we have a couple options at that position. What are your thoughts on the, the Alex Len signing? And did you say Alex Len or Jonas Valanciunas? Because I'm looking at this guy's career highlights and they're nearly identical in the way that they run their movement on the court. I think that there's a little some marquee differences, obviously, in terms of Alex Len doesn't seem nearly the player that Jonas did, but at the same time, he didn't play on nearly the caliber of teams. But what excites me the most about this is a couple of things. Big man, right? He has some sort of experience uh, playing in the NBA, so he's not a, a raw <laughs> prospect that we're bringing in. So at least, at least if Chris Boucher, he gets, he runs a little bit wild and his IQ is sus, you have a guy that can maybe be a little bit more stable, albeit less dynamic, less potential. But he, so he's a big man. He's on a small contract, $2.3 million, only one year. So we're not eating into cap space for next free agency. And he shoots the three a little bit. He dabbled with one season. He had 36% on 2.6 threes per game since he's not been nearly as effective, but he's, he's willing to take the shot and step out beyond the arc. There's a couple things to like about this signing, Ben. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, he's, as you said, seven foot, two hundred and fifty pounds for the Atlanta Hawks. Eight points, uh, six rebounds. He's he's a guy that, you know, he's a big body down low. And I think the interesting topic surrounding Alex Len, outside of his sort of skill set, and obviously being similar to JV, not not as skilled by any means, but Aaron Baines, I think, is the guy everyone predicts to be the starting center for the Toronto Raptors. Unless he comes in and is horrible or something, falls off a cliff from where he was last season, or gets injured or something, Aaron Baines is probably the de facto center. Maybe we close with OG Ananobi at center. But the backup role is sort of up to up for question right now. Some people are saying Alex Len is better than Chris Boucher. I'm of the camp of, of the opposite. I, I like Boucher. Obviously, Boucher is getting a higher contract. Alex Len only on... A one-year, two point two million, I believe the the deal's worth. Boucher obviously signed two years, fourteen million. So the Raptors have more money invested in Boucher, more sort of experience being on the team for two years. And you brought up Lens three-point shooting. It's I, I wouldn't necessarily call him a shooter just yet. Shot, shot just twenty-seven percent from three last season. Oh, he's we were, not a shooter, Ben. I yeah. did. I wasn't trying to make that claim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like it's a it's it's all that sort of stuff. But uh, Chris Boucher, do you do you see? Boucher and Len sort of competing for that backup center position or do you see someone sort of running away with it because the the discussion is sort of sparse on what people believe in terms of who they'd rather have playing between those two yeah but the but the, the issue is Ben it's very clear it's Boucher is going to be down here or up here right he's going to give you this or this on any given night and Alex Len sort of his ebbs and flows are a lot more in the middle He's not going to be as flashy. He's not going to be able to come in and really take over a game the way that we saw Chris Boucher display a couple of times. And you had examples like, uh, was it the Lakers game? And he had a big Mavs. I think he was a part of that big Mavs 40 point comeback. There was some really impressive things that Boucher done or did throughout the last season that for as many as those, he also went out and was a turnover machine or had just questionable, you know, shot attempts or was hucking up too many threes. Alex Lenny's a bit more steady, but the thing that worries me, Ben, and this is why you really got to check out this highlight reel that I watched. His most impressive move was just a Euro step around Taj Gibson, which I'm not putting a lot of stock into because he's got to be a Taj Gibson on the Minnesota Timberwolves. So that is a slow, slow Taj Gibson. His second best move, <laughs> his second best move was a very awkward Kyle Kuzma floater in the lane, you know, like a, like a fall away floater. And that's it. The rest, the rest is just three point shots and dump offs or like drive to the lane and, and dump it to him for, for a dunk. So he looks for dunks. That's good. And Fred Van Vliet and Kyle, they love to do the pick and dish. So they'll get his, he'll get his shots if he plays. I just don't think he has as much to offer as Chris Boucher, Trey Boucher, obviously. Trey, Trey Boucher. Yeah. I, th I think I'm in a, 
in agreement with you there. Alex Lynn is definitely a guy that he's good insurance. The same way we had Greg Monroe for mm-hmm. for a stretch in the season. You know, Alex Lynn can sort of come in and someone gets injured, he can guard other centers. And maybe, you know, he's not obviously the most mobile of guys. He's he's not horrifically athletic for a, a center of, of his size. You know, he's a, he's you know, he's he's not moose. He's terribly unathletic. Well, he, he's He's unathletic, but I don't think he's as bad as Greg Monroe. I think Greg Monroe was a, a bit more flat-footed and stuff, and we saw that definitely in the second round versus the Philadelphia 76ers when he pretty well won us that series during that four minutes he was on the court, and the Raptors outscored them by 13 points. But, you know, shout out Moose. He deserved a ring for just that playing against us in that series. But Alex Len, I think he, he's a, a fine enough defender for insurance, right? He can come in and... One interesting thing about the center position for this Raptors team is we saw how valuable Marc Gasol was to this roster when he was going up against the likes of Giannis, Embiid, you know, those types of guys having a big center down low that can go body for body with these, you know, other big players in the league. And you and I brought this point up during uh, when we were worried about their, when the, the Raptors weren't going to have any centers that the, arguably the three best players in the Eastern Conference on other teams in the Toronto Raptors, Embiid, Giannis, and... Uh, and Tatum, you know, they're all close to seven foot. They're they're driving and stuff. So it's a uh, it's you need a big down there to sort of protect the paint. The Tatum one, I'm not so sure about, but you you kind of want a mobile defender. You want OG on Tatum. You want just in the, on the backside on the back back. Yeah, you want help defense drop. to be able to come inside him. But yep. he, but Tatum's not playing down the post. But Embiid is going to be living down the post. Giannis, you just, it's proven. You just need to make a wall. You just need to just build a barrier, and he's going to try to smash his way through it like Khabib mm-hmm. Nurmagomedov, but unsuccessful because he can't get himself out of the final round of the playoffs. But just a little <laughs> cheeky UFC res- reference because I love it. Um, but the simple fact of the matter is you're, you're absolutely right. This is a guy, he's an assurance big he is going to fight for minutes to an extent off the bench mm-hmm. with Boucher, but we're not. Nick Nurse is not going to lose any sleep in benching him if he needs to and, mm-hmm. and never once playing him in the same way that Jared Sullinger never got played. And obviously, he had other issues off the court, but there, there's not going to, nobody's going to be feeling bad for Alex. Len, no offense to Alex Len. Maybe he has huge supporters <laughs> in the Raptors community already, but nobody's going to feel bad if at the end of the day, he's just there just to be a placeholder in case there's two injuries on both of our bigs. And come playoff time, if we don't need him, we don't need him. But Ben, you're right. We might need him against Embiid. We might need him against Giannis. We might need him against some of those bigger, less mobile bigs. And I think that that's a fine pickup if you're only paying him $2 million. I think it's great. Yeah. No, I definitely agree with that. But, you know, we've talked about how we think he's good insurance, right? We've talked about how we're fine with him sort of being that backup guy, being a player that can you know come in be that moose monroe maybe wave him halfway through the season if we think we want to stay under the cap or something you know that's what ended up happening to moose that's who we're comparing him to but right when we had moose we had two really good starting caliber centers obviously they're older now because serge would still be a remarkable center marcus all you and i kind of wanted to let go but right now we only have aaron baines and we are both very hyped about that pickup but He's a guy that has been injured over the course of his career. He's a player that has dealt dealt with, you know, lay, lower body issues, back stuff. He wasn't playing in the bubble. And he we're relying on him big time to, to give us some big time minutes. And, you know, he's 33 years old. If he goes down, Riker, if he goes down, Alex Len might be forced to play, you know, 30, Starting 30 minutes. Yep. Still, like, obviously, both you and I probably project... OG Ananobi, you know, this guy back here, right? Him being our closing guy down the stretch of games, right? I'm hyped we get the visuals, you know? It's, it's, it's crazy, not used to it. But, uh, you know, do you think we'll need to get someone, make another trade, make something else? Because I think he's capable of it, but if we're a championship contending team, I don't know if we can really have him playing over 10 minutes a game in, in our rotation. I think that you just summed up every Raptors worst nightmare coming out of this off season. Cause there's a little bit of argument around whether or not Ibaka is really as valuable as what everybody is slating him to be. And not in terms of money, but just in terms of being a rotation piece. And I mean, I, I basically said before, if we didn't re-sign him that the Raptors would be 
screwed because he was basically the only reason that they kept in those Boston games. He's putting up 17 points. He's the only guy hitting a three. He's the only guy being consistent. And thankfully, you get a bit of that back with Baines. But you're right. If you lose Baines, you're relying on Len being the starting center and Boucher to bring you through tough games, tough series, you know, real opponents. I think that that would be very worrying, Ben. But I, I, I don't know. I think that this season it'll be a real test, but there might be other moves. Do you have something in mind? Is that, is that why you're bringing it up? Or... No, I don't really have anything in mind, but, uh, you know, we have we were kind of flamed in the comments. People, We were worried when we didn't have a center. We expressed those worries on a podcast, and then people were like, oh, you don't trust him, Masai. Obviously, both you and I have a lot of faith in Masai Ujiri, but there's still, you know, he said we're good and all that sort of stuff, which I definitely agree with the Baines pickup, but an injury happens here or there. You know, we saw even our centers go down last season, and, you know, when Gasol was out, Ibaka was able to step in. When Ibaka was out... Uh, Gasol was able to step in. I don't know if I said that correctly in order, but, you know, Boucher was able to come in and stretches against certain teams. I guess we have that sort of dynamic with Baines and Len, but certainly Len isn't the caliber of those other guys mentioned. Boucher's going to have to be relied upon on this point. And before, in the Boucher video, you said you're not really that trustworthy on, on Boucher. Right, you don't really want to give him the reins just yet, the f- utmost confidence going into a playoff series. So I guess before we sort of close this off, we we discussed about the comparison right there. But you said you're not confident in Boucher, you're not confident in Len. You know, full utmost confidence. We're playing against the the Boston Celtics, the Milwaukee Bucks, the the Philadelphia 76ers. Maybe it's different for different teams. Who do you want to see as a, sort of our backup center in that that position? Here's the thing. We're playing against the Miami Heat, the Brooklyn Nets, the Boston Celtics. You're not playing any of the bigs in any of those series. Maybe you're playing Boucher for a little bit, Mm -hmm. but you're, you're starting a small ball lineup right off the jump. I guarantee you that. And in a series against the Bucks or a series against the Sixers, yeah, you want Baines as your number one guy. If there's any risk of injury, you're probably resting him for 20 games before the playoffs start. You know, you're, you are not making any writ. Like, you are going to sit that guy as long as it takes to make him healthy. And But that's the thing. In, in a series like that where you really just want him for D, most notably against the 76ers, you just want somebody to prevent Embiid from getting low paint points or low paint position, you'd be fine with having Len out there. I, I'm not as nervous about that situation. But I would be nervous that, yeah, you have extended games where Baines is injured, and now who's going to come off? The, who's starting, right? Is Boucher going to start? Is that starting lineup going to be able to actually win you games or close out games? I don't know. I don't know. That's why, and and we don't really know. We don't know what, if the if this was even offered, or if there was negotiations. But I said I wanted Baines. That happened. Demarcus Cousins, and that's a that's a big gamble. But he was a one time before three injuries in a row. He was mm-hmm. the one time 2016 general consensus best center in the NBA and he picked up a similar contract to Alex Len with the Houston Rockets. Now, I don't know if the Raptors offered him anything or not, but I would have been more confident in the guy like that rather than Alex Len as your backup backup center, but that's the, that's the way it played out. Yeah, no for sure. And you know, we've talked about Alex Len a lot. Again, he's going to be a guy that deep bench we're not 100% sure what we're really getting from this guy at this point, but you know, cuz he's been on tr- not very good team, so to speak, over the course of his career. And he has a a dubious record in the NBA, the most games played without a playoff minute, right? He hasn't played in a single playoff game over the course of his career. So one could make the point that he's just not been on good rosters, not been on a team that could really get the most out of him. Maybe on the Toronto Raptors, that could be taken to the next level. I, I think even with the losses to our roster, both you, have, everyone in the NBA should expect us to be making the playoffs this year. So maybe there's some untapped playoff potential with uh, Alex Lund now coming in this uh, <laughs> this off season. But it'll be interesting to see what happens with with him, Riker. You know, any 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 high, high hopes for Alex Lund in the playoffs? Well, Ben, I broke down my projected. Eastern Conference playoff berths, playoff seedings one through eight. And I'm saying Bucks, who did I say? Bucks, Celtics, Nets, Raptors, maybe Heat, Raptors, 76ers. I think that I think that probably 
I think probably the Heat are playing the Raptors in the first round. And so I don't see Len playing very much in that series, Ben. So I don't have any sort of big hopes, big aspirations come playoff time for Alex Len. Switching the screen just to me, because I'm saying that's blasphemous. We're the two seed next year. The Bucks are going crazy. They're going hard at it, but they they will go hard at the regular season. We're surprising everyone with the two seed. Assuming the Nets don't get James Harden, I think we're we're staying ahead of them. You know, the Celtics are going to be below us. The Heat are below us. The Nets are below us. The Sixers, I think they improved a lot with Daryl Murray as their GM. That's we can make a whole video on this debate, and this is just something that you and I were texting this morning, Riker. But you know. <laughs> I, I think the Raptors will be good. Regular season, I think we're going to be fine, just like we were last year. Both you and I, you know, everyone thought we were at least going to fall off, even Raptors fans. I know everyone roasts Sam Mitchell and Dennis Scott about saying, oh, they're not going to make the playoffs and those guys. But we had people in our comments section flaming us for predicting us to be a top two seed. And we were a top two seed, Riker. You know, we, we were not surprised about that. You know, we can... <laughs> we can... <laughs> Suck it. That in there. But, uh... <laughs> I think you were right. You were wrong. <laughs> we've never been wrong on anything on these these podcasts, especially trade scenarios. They're always they're always on the money with us. Lonzo but, uh, Ball to the Raptors. <laughs> but anyways, I, I I'm predicting again. Regular season wise, Siakam's going to step up. He's going to come back. OG's going to step up. Fred's going to step up. These guys are will fill in the sho- shoes that were lost of. Uh, Serge and Gasol will be fine. Alex Len is a decent pickup, but you guys are the best for making this far. Check out the Twitter, the Instagram, all that cool stuff. Check out the website, and also let us know in the comment section below. I think this podcast ran a little bit cleaner in terms of production than the last one. Had some had some funky stuff going on in the last one, but definitely let us know what you think of the new layout. Right, if you want more sort of gifts inside of it, organized in it, or or not. We tried to. We once tried to just go all face cam, and people didn't really like that there was no gifts, and then we. You know, we went back to the all gifts. So now we're kind of making a mix of both. You know, let us know what you guys think, combining it, you know, getting that stuff there. But uh, Riker, do you have any last words? Shout out to Ukraine, Ben. I know we had a blossoming Lithuanian audience <laughs> when we had JV, and now we're bringing in you, Alex Len. Shout out to Ukraine. I'm sure we'll get some fans coming from them, from that country. If you're from the UK, the Ukraine, if you're from the Ukraine, leave a, leave a comment down below. If you're still watching Raptors Digest videos and you're from Lithuania, we'll show you on the next podcast. So you sure, guys are from Lith- but we'll know only if you comment in their language because it was very complex. Yep. <laughs> Cheers. I can't even sign off. <laughs>